Hi again, everybody, and welcome to another Perry's Inside Scoop. The Orange are on the road this week to take on Pitt at Acrisure Stadium. Cuse having won back-to-back games on the road. They head in off a bye week for another primetime Thursday night matchup. Coach Brown is with us, and uh, Coach, this is an exciting time. We knew going into this period of the schedule, three straight road games would be awfully difficult. You've won in Vegas, you've won in Raleigh. How did the bye week go in terms of your approach and attitude and the mission? It's business as usual, you know, just staying, sticking to the script, staying to what we know best, um, just working. Got to uh, catch up on schoolwork, dominate academically, um, be able to communicate with families a little bit more, but uh, from the main, from the most part, just sticking to the script, we're just doing what we do daily. Your players are buying into that, aren't they? You talked about even through the offseason, the why it was so important to have a Kyle McCord, a, a Fidel Diggs merging with Marlo Wax, Justin Barron, the leadership of this team. I saw where uh, Kyle had said this morning on uh, his own uh, radio show here in town that, look, it's not a vacation by week. And that mentality has got to permeate the whole team to be successful. Oh, no, we work. You have to work. It's important that you work. Um, Vacations are taken in the summer, mm-hmm. for the most part, or uh, they're taking um, in the middle of January. Outside of that, I don't think there's really a vacation time. You know, in the summer or the middle of January, so when you try to take vacation. What is top of mind in terms of getting across your team? And I, I understand the routine itself is part of that message. But when you say, "Hey, what made us successful?" Uh, at UNLV, at NC State. You had three takeaways, for instance, uh, in the game against uh, the Wolfpack to, to win that one the last time out. What do you do to go about keeping that momentum alive going in against an undefeated pit team this week? Uh, just go do, like be uh, be the best versions of ourselves. You know, Just compete with each other, compete, uh, play for your brother, play for the guy next to you. Uh, just dart you know, over and over and just commit to care trust. So just keep constantly that and your actions show that, but just dart, just being ourselves on a daily basis, you know, just focusing on us, trying to be the best versions of ourselves, complimentary football. You know, if the defense gets a uh, takeaway, then offense, you need to go capitalize and put some points up. Special teams, let's be able to do what's needed, whether it's make a field goal, uh, flip the field through a punt stand uh, situation, uh, PBR, try to return and get us a first down with just catching the ball first. Then going to get 10 more yards afterwards. But just doing everything that's needed to help the other side of the ball or special team. That had to be the most pleasing part of the NC State game, right? Not just that the takeaways, but that it was apparent that you cashed in on the opportunity scoring after each one. Yeah, they did a good job. I thought they played complimentary football. I was really uh, – Pleased with that, but I'm um, just excited. But we got a new task to hand. I sure. think Pitt's a, a really good football team. So, you know, there's different uh, things that we'll face this week. Sure. What's the when you scout the Panthers and you get a sense of uh, what it takes this week? What what makes the difference? Obviously, they've been very successful at six and zero. They won some tight games. They run the rock as always under uh, Coach Narduzzi. Uh, they know what they're doing. It's just a tough football team. Um, and they got a good quarterback, a really good running back, um, some receivers that are tough to handle. And I think their uh, tight end's really good with an offensive line that's good. You know, you got two pro tackles, you know. Sure. So when you got two tackles that are pros, that guards are really good football players, and the center who's come along and has made that offensive line complete, I think they got an elite offense. And then defensively, they do a real good job. I think uh, up front, when you look at uh, – Fitzsimmons, he does a real good job. You know, he's the live wire of that group. And, uh, you know, you got Nick James and Jimmy Scott. And when you get to the linebackers, George Biles. Biles, I don't want to mess up any by name. I think it's Biles. That's how you say it. And I like uh, Donovan McMillan's a really good player. And they got two, like, scrappy corners. And Narduzzi's defense will always be scrappy. So uh, we got our hands full. I think they have probably one of the, if not the best, kicker in the country. You know, this kid can really kick field goals. He's made 50-plus yards yeah. several times. Um, and then special teams, they do a real good job. So uh, we're just going on there. just want to be able to compete with a really good football team. They're a proven team, and we're trying to go out and show that uh, we can compete with Sure. Uh, Coach Narduzzi in his 10th uh, year has had a lot of success. This team off to their best start, obviously. It looks like it kind of built in his image and the, the way they want to play, and, the, and they really do uh, get after you. It's kind of interesting. They Always Syracuse and Pittsburgh going together. One of the things you've done uh, coming on board is embrace the history of the program and, and the former players. And these series, when you talk Pitt, Boston College, the reason they're protected is is for – there are reasons for that. And it means the alumni, everybody's had that share 
experience. Syracuse hasn't been successful in Pitt in, in the last little bit here, but everybody's played in this kind of uh, series going back, so it means a lot go, going back literally 100 years. Yeah, it's exciting. They said it was the 80th uh, time that guys had an opportunity to play together. I think this might be the 81st time. Um, I mean, it's cool to be a part of that, you know, to be a part of history, to have an opportunity to go up and compete against those guys. We just got to focus on us, though, and just being open to, uh, you know, being able to take the good with the bad and just going in and play a really good football game. Yeah, a couple of quick hitters here on uh, individual personnel. You gave kind of some injury updates and that type of thing uh, during the week. We're looking forward to the return, for instance, of Marlo Wax. Maybe not this week, but uh, coming when the Orange return to the Dome to take on Virginia Tech on the second. A couple of those things. Jackson Meeks, I think, is an interesting story. Coach has had a couple of huge games here recently, including uh, against uh, NC State. And he seems to be emblematic of the approach that you're talking about, a, a little bit of a seed brought from the Georgia program along with yourself and uh, has faced adversity. It hasn't come super easily for him, but he's he's shown the skills and it's a product of his work. Yeah, he's a tough football player. He's a tough kid. Um, his mom did an amazing job raising him. Um, he's just a, uh, he's hard work. You know, I think he exemplifies our culture. Um, he is dark and uh, he lives dark and he's committed. He cares and I can trust him. So. You know, I'm very thankful that he's here on our football team, and I think he lifts the other players up. He's always, like, ready to go. You know, him and LaQuinn are just, like, they're active all the time, always active. So extremely thankful for um, him being here. You know, I don't know what we would do right now if we didn't have Jackson Meeks on our football team. We're a better football team with him, and we're a better football team when he's playing yeah. his best football. Tone setter there. The one guy I wanted to single out on the, the defensive side is Justin Barron, who stuffed the stat sheet in the game against uh, NC State. He had the interception. He had a fumble uh, recovery and, and uh, Derek McDonald breaking up the fumble and a lot of different things. But to me, yeah, maybe one or two guys sometimes get the stats, but it's indicative, right? You, you've got 11 people doing the right thing a lot for the defense to be as successful uh, at the right times as it has been. Yeah, hopefully we just continue to do that and could capitalize on that and build on that. It becomes contagious. Um, you know, I think Justin Barron's a really good football player. He has a lot of football left in his life to play, and, I, you know, I'm challenging him. I want to see him go hit. You know, I want to see him put his pads on people and – uh take full advantage of how strong he is. I want to see contact when it comes to Justin Barron. Um, but he does a really good job when it comes to just being able to get the ball. Uh, I mean, he think he had three turnovers on his own last week. So, I mean, the kid is a, just a really, really good football player. But I want to see him continue to climb and his game continue to go to the next level. I mean, he's done that. We've gone from nickel to Will Backer. I think this week he'll play a lot of Will ba uh, nickel again, you know, just with different things. But he'll be playing some Will also. Um, and I think you'll see uh, even more of him the following week when we get Marlo back completely, sure. you know, because Marlo, Marlo's a good leader. And just being able to have Marlo back on the field, you'll get now to see. It affects the alignment of everybody else. Yeah, because now he'll be able to go back out and you'll be able to see him do some different things in there. So we're extremely thankful and happy um, for Justin Barron to be able to move from nickel to safety to sure. linebacker. Not a lot of people can do that. Sure. And this guy's playing in the box, you yeah. know, so he's done a good job, man. Well, he's statistically, he's been there, too, uh, playing the run, playing the pass, uh, do it at all. And, of course, getting ahead of ourselves here, you talk about, like, a Fidel Diggs who's been playing different positions. You get everybody in the position that you intended for them, um, you might uh, really have something there. So, uh, big one here, Coach. Big opportunity Thursday night uh, on the road at Pittsburgh. Everybody's looking forward to the clash. Best of luck. I appreciate it. That's Orange Head Coach Fran Brown. Looking forward to it Thursday night in the Steel City. This has been our Perry's Inside Scoop. Check out all Perry's flavors at perrysicecream.com.